the, the talk tonight uh, is titled Resource Safety in the Western Australian Industry, Developing a New Culture, and it's by Simon Skevington of the Department of Mines and Petroleum. Uh, the Western Australian Government is committed to overhauling the way safety and health in the resource industries are regulated. <coughs> this commitment is the response of, uh, to increased demands brought on by community expectations of improved safety outcomes, growth of the resources industry and the findings of a number of independent reviews, inquiries and audits. Simon Skevington's talk will be about how the Department of Mines and Petroleum is carrying out this important government commitment. <laughs> uh, Simon, Simon is the project director of the safety reform project team and is a member of the Mines Department's uh, corporate executive. He is responsible for implementing the safety reform strategy and cost recovery approach to, um, uh, to this reform. Uh, Simon was appointed as project director in May 2010 uh, to implement the best practice safety reform process. Simon is a mechanical engineer with nearly 30 years in government with the last 15 years leading the development of major infrastructure projects including the Australian Marine Complex at Henderson, the Australian Resource Research Centre at Bentley and the Okiji Project. He also has experience leading the approvals facilitation for major resource projects and has been involved in, has been involved in statewide strategic planning as a member of a number of high level planning committees. So please put your hands together to welcome Simon to the podium to present his talk. Thanks, Ivor. Um, I guess Ivor must be scraping the barrel to get, bring his colleagues along to, to these things, but uh, <laughs> I hope you find it interesting. Uh, um, as he's already mentioned, my background has not been in safety. My background has been in facilitating projects and getting things through approvals and trying to help you know, uh, get major infrastructure in place to allow projects to proceed. Um, before that, I was doing research work, which is totally irrelevant to what we're doing. I guess one of the things that's driven my taking on this role was industry came along to the department when the minister announced that there would be reforms and said, if we're going to be paying money for mining as a levy towards safety, we don't want business as usual. We don't want you to just add on a few more inspectors and then just keep doing the same thing. We want something different. Therefore, we don't want resources safety in the department to, to manage the process. We want it to be managed by someone outside that process. And because I had no background in dealing with them, this was something that allowed me to come in and look at things with a, a very different set of eyes and a, a set of eyes of, of someone that had actually been dealing with industry and approvals. Um, so from my point of view, it was a, it was a fascinating project and it was, it's been an amazing learning experience, especially about things, the national harmonisation process, which I'll try and touch on as well if I can, even though it's not a core of this. The presentation's fairly short and I'll just run through the high level things of what we're doing and then what I'd, I'd like is people to ask questions about more of the detail but I just wasn't sure how far to go in some of the areas um, because of the audience is, is probably more technically oriented but not around the safety process. Okay, so the, I guess the, the core vision for this is that the regulator um, needs to be proactive and work with industry to create an environment in which resilient safety cultures are the norm and companies, workers and the wider community are confident that industry is operating as safe as possible. There's been a, a number of steps in the process of trying to work at a lower risk. I mean, the, the, the mining industry by nature, of course, is a high risk industry. Everything we do is about risk. As soon as we take a step, we are assessing the risk of that taking that step. As soon as we hop in a car, we're assessing the risk of hopping in a car. And there's a number of things that we do that we take for granted. It wasn't that long ago that no one would have worn a seatbelt in a car. But now it's, it's the norm. It's expected. Uh, you don't even think about it. You just put the seatbelt on. What we're trying to do in the reform process is now say, we need to get those sorts of cultures happening in safety in the workplace. It wasn't that long ago that people were not wearing any harnesses at heights. People were digging barrels of asbestos fibres you know, and shifting them by hand. There's a lot of things that have actually shifted over time in the safety process of how we work. 
Um, and it sort of started from a recognition that, there, that we do need to, to work a bit differently. Then there was the issue of maybe of bringing in systems to try and manage that process, uh, bringing in some electronic equipment to try and help manage the process. But the phase we're at now is really trying to get the workers to understand that it's their role to take responsibility for their actions and the actions of those around them in managing safety. It, it's trying to change people so that they understand that it's not someone else's responsibility, it's their responsibility. If they find something that they don't consider to be safe, they need to let people know. Uh, it's been quite difficult because while we're finding a commitment at the very top level and we're finding a commitment at the very bottom level, we sometimes get the message lost in the middle layer of management where th they sort of are driving the message of production becomes before safety. But that's what we're trying to fix. So that's part of the process. The ultimate aim of this, of course, is zero harm. I mean, it would be nice to get to the point where we have no deaths on a mine site or any of, of the resource sector work sites. Um, I think that's a little bit of a tough ask. It is a risky environment. There are a lot of people working in it. Um, but that's what the aim is. The process started, I guess, back in September 2009. There was a number of deaths happening in the mining sector. Um, I think there was, if I remember rightly, leading up to this, there was six deaths in mining, I think then two the year before that and three the year before that. Um, there was also a number of reviews culminating in the Kenner review in 2009, which said to the minister, we need to do something about it. Uh, a business case was put to him because the other part of this was that the, our resources safety division for mining was decimated because with the growth of the industry, they were not able to keep inspectors. The industry was snapping up these people. They could pay them a lot more. They lost 50% of the inspectors that we had. So we couldn't even manage our commitments. You know, it was a load to manage them with the number of inspectors. Each, and we couldn't increase the salaries because the public sector, it's very hard to increase salaries above normal public sector salaries. Um, and with this growth, it's, it's the opportunity as well that if we don't do it now, we'll never do it. And with the amount of information flowing out with media, it was, there was a lot more attention paid to it and there was an increasing community expectation that people would come home safely from work. <coughs> what we're trying to do with the, uh, the process um, and the cultural change, I guess, in the process is shift the regulator away from being a prescriptive regulator to more evidence-based. At the moment, the view is you know, where the police will tell you what you're doing it wrong and will write out pins, you know, notices, will uh, we'll shut things down if necessary, where we really need to be moving towards a more uh, evidence-based process where we can say, you provide the evidence through things like principal hazard management plans to say, you understand what the risks are, you've put the, the controls and things in place, you've tested those to make sure that they work, uh, you've made sure that you've involved everyone right down to the floor, to the people that are working in that area, so that they understand that the risks, they understand the responsibility, they understand what the controls are. Um, you provide evidence and then we probably don't need to be as prescriptive. We can make sure that we can help you if necessary to get on with it, but we'll leave you to it. And those ones that don't or aren't able to provide that level of evidence are the ones that we need to be more prescriptive with. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to shift the regulator from being a policeman to being a facilitator. It is industry's responsibility under the regulations to manage safety. The regulator has no responsibility in managing safety. Their responsibility is about making sure that industry is abiding by the regulations. The second component is probably about the government funding. As I said before, we were struggling to get inspectors because we could not compete with the salaries being offered by industry. The government said, if you want to do this reform, which we need to do, we cannot afford to do it with government funding. Industry needs to pay their way. They've been getting this service for free. They need to start paying for the service that, that they're getting. And so we need to shift towards a model where industry pays, user pays. The, the secondary side of that, of course, is 
that we've now been able to bump up the salaries of inspectors. We have a whole new package for inspectors where they are no longer public servants. They are on two-year performance contracts where their salary is competitive in the industry. I think, a, I think the base salary of a, of a manager is about 200000 a year, which is, and then there's bonus things on top of that. Bonuses are paid on performance. But the thing with it is, if industry then starts competing with us and offering more to get, take those people back, th then we have to put our salaries up again. All that's happening is industry is paying more both ways. So industry is paying more and more and more and more as it goes up because they're having cost recovery. 